this video. Oh yes, sir. We're here with the American Jeep at uh, Bewley. This is Palace House, which you can visit when you come to the National Motor Museum, of which this is one of the star exhibits. Shall I stop now? The Jeep has become one of the icons of American motoring, inspired so many other vehicles, was built by so many different manufacturers all around the world, Japan, China, India, uh, even the UK, it inspired the Land Rover very, very clearly. And that's because it was really kind of the first of its kind. It's the small, very light, considered to, compared to uh, the bigger army trucks, four by four. It can go pretty much anywhere. It can carry people. It's quite quick. It can do 65 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, it's a formidable bit of kit and a really interesting development story as well. Now, amusingly, there are some links to the Austin Motor Company of Great Britain, a company called American Austin started building Austin 7s under license in America. Tough market for such a tiny little car and things didn't go very well. Uh, the company was bought out by another and American Bantam was formed. And American Bantam was one of three manufacturers that responded to the uh, US government when they said, we need a small light reconnaissance sort of a car. And they came up with a proposal. Willys Overland came up with a proposal and Ford themselves, the giants of American motoring also responded. Uh, but most of the initial groundwork was done by American Bantam. Each manufacturer built around 1,500 examples of their 4x4 to be tested by the army. And they were tested by being sent off to all parts of the world, even to Russia. But the government decided American Bantam was a bit too small and it asked Willys Overland to use its engine and to build its Jeeps to its design. But uh, then that design also got taken up by Ford because they needed production volume to produce somewhere in the region of 640,000 of these military Jeeps. An extraordinary number. So what made the Jeep so extraordinary was the fact that it has four wheel drive. That was not a very common thing then. So some heavy trucks had it, but it was very unusual in something small for carrying passengers. So we've got a transfer case, which splits the drive front and rear. Uh, it's selectable, so most of the time you're running around just in two-wheel drive on the rear axle and you can engage the front axle as you need it. It also has high and low gears, so you can put it in a crawler gear for going over particularly torrid terrain. Suspension is all by leaf springs, so they're a bit bouncy and some of the test footage of these things being put through their paces, soldiers holding on grimly in the back while the things bounce around. Yeah, not the most comfortable. Uh, this is not a Range Rover, but uh, very functional, very, very effective. This one saw action in the Normandy invasion of 1944. It was built in 1943. Uh, this one was built by Willys Overland, but like I say, Ford also built a great number of them. And after the war, other companies got involved. Hotchkiss in France built Jeeps. Mitsubishi in Japan built Jeeps. Mahindra, famously in India, built Jeeps. Uh, and civilian versions were developed after the war, which obviously led to where we are now, Jeep producing all manner of 4x4s. So under the bonnet, we have the Willys Go Devil, the L134 engine. It's a flathead side valve design, about 2.2 litres, and a tiny little carburetor over this side, and an absolutely enormous generator over that side to generate the electricity. It's a very simple, very, very hardy engine, and these vehicles quickly gained a reputation for uh, being incredibly robust, which is kind of what you want in a vehicle that's serving in the front line. You kind of want it to be reliable. There are no doors, so clambering aboard is fairly easy, but you have to squeeze yourself around this rather large steering wheel, which is thrust right at your chest with a lovely big nut there, just to impale you uh, in the event of an accident. So we've got a free speed transmission. So first is on a dog leg, and uh, we've got levers down here. That one controls whether your four wheel drives in or out. And this is your high and low range. So we're currently in high range. Look, on base, you're only allowed to do 20 miles an hour. We're gonna be limited to about that today. Uh, off base, 40, but 65 miles an hour is the potential. Unlike most cars I've ever driven, uh, this one has a gun mounted um, just here in front of the driver. Um, 
yeah, that's slightly unusual. Uh, we've got the speedometer, which interestingly, although these allegedly can do 65 miles an hour, it only goes up to 60. I'm sure that really kept the squaddies in check. Uh, coolant gauge here, oil pressure. Um, that gauge has nothing on it at all. And then we've got something for charging as well. And I wonder if these are little lights to illuminate the controls. Pedals, pretty much as you'd expect. Uh, we've got a little starter button tucked away under the dashboard. And this little fellow is the handbrake, which I believe operates on the transmission. It's got a drum rather like a Land Rover. Uh, got a key to start it. We've got optional indicators have actually been fitted to this example. We've got a light switch over here. But uh, you, you probably want to know what the wipers look like. So I guess we should probably do a test. We've got the passenger one disengaged. It is in free flow mode. So you can adjust it to, at a speed to suit yourself. But this one should be electric if I can find which button operates it. Not that one. Nothing is labeled. That's the, the um, fr hand throttle, I think. There we go. That's a, a thrilling performance there. But you can adjust the park position a bit, I think. So we've got the motor up here. So it is trying to rain. So at least we can see what's going on. But yeah, chasms of disappointment all around. You're probably better just doing it yourself, to be honest. Starting is simply a case of a bit of heel and toe, heel on the throttle and toe on the starter button under the dashboard. Sounds quite meaty, I think. Uh, very smooth as well. That's that handbrake, just flick that off. Quite a high bite on this clutch. And we're gonna do an about turn. First off, but yeah, you feel very exposed like you could quite easily fall out. It's all right for me. Uh, I've got a steering wheel to hold on to. My poor cameraman is trying his best not to fall out of the vehicle. But yeah, as, as well as an interesting driving experience, there's the, the social narrative of this car as well. And uh, obviously the action this car would have seen it sometimes doesn't bear thinking about, but nonetheless, the, the Jeep was so vital to the war effort. Oh, we've got a secret army exhibition going on here. Maybe we should just park up there instead. Here we go. I have got indicators so I can very noisily indicate my intentions to other traffic. That would not have been standard feature. And uh, we're just driving past the Domus, which is a wonderful old building. Part of the uh, original Abbey the ruins of which um, can still be seen today. But yeah, you definitely need a full day to explore this place, but we've got a bit of space or I know people around, we should go for second gear. And once you're in second, you can kind of stay there all day. It's got so much torque. But actually the pickup, because they're fairly light, they're under a ton, I think, in weight, all, all up. It sort of picks up quite nicely. Uh, I, I imagine the, um, the army folk had plenty of fun with these going all over the place. The brakes. They're there. I wouldn't say they're the best, but no synchromesh on first, so we'll just select that carefully. Somewhere. There we go. There's a very slight movement to get it into first gear. Out the way, seagulls! Oh, we've got to watch out for the uh, big red buses coming the other way at us. But we're going to hook a left. The monorail going over as well. What a fantastic place this is. But yeah, it actually rides a bit better than I expected. I imagine over really rough terrain, it's a bit of a nightmare, but uh, it just feels quite pleasant to drive. And the engine's so relaxing because it's all about low down torque. It's also lovely that so many of the exhibits, not all the exhibits, but a good number of them are in drivable condition like this. Oh, what was it? If you pulled that out to there. Oh, yes, baby. Yeah, it's quite a good horn, actually. 
you can definitely annoy, annoy plenty of people with that. So there we go, there's the uh, fascinating world of the Jeep. Uh, it started for not the best of reasons, war, but uh, went on to become an absolute icon of motoring history. So I hope you've enjoyed that very much. Don't forget you can head to the Hubnut store if you wish to support what we do here. But otherwise, I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Pachoo! Plenty of torque, so it potters along very, very nicely at very, very low speeds. Which is good, because the van's just pulled straight out in front of us. <laughs> to be fair, we were hiding in his blind spot. <laughs>